Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Kini News. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission has released several recordings of telephone conversations involving former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak with regards to the 1MDB scandal. The MACC revealed these recordings at a press conference today with the Chief Commissioner Latifa Koya saying that the Commission received the recordings from anonymous sources after the new year. Forensic tests concluded that the recordings were authentic and not tampered with. We have been given the recordings but I won't tell you uh, from where at this point. Pursuant to investigations, we can confirm their absolute authenticity. The contents are shocking. It's of cover-up and subversion of justice and institutions. At that same press conference in Putrajaya, Latifa said that the recordings were revealed to the media as it concerned an issue of public interest. She added that the recordings would be sent to the police for further action. Latifa elaborated that there are serious issues that arise from the audio clips. These include abuse of power, criminal conspiracy and obstruction of justice among others. Among the phone recordings released by the commission today was one between former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak and the former MACC chief Zulkifli Ahmad. The conversation dated January 5, 2016 involves Zulkifli calling Najib to inform him that he was dismayed about an investigation paper. At that time, Zulkifli was with the Attorney General's chambers. Tapi dan dia tu memang memang dengan saya dah. Saya tu memang dapat tadi itu kita dah. Saya dah ambil dah IP semua tu buat tu masuk ke tempat saya. Tapi yang itu tak apa saya dengan dan 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 si Eji tak ada masalah. Si si Eji dah ikut kita bersependapat ada masalah cuma nak update kan untuk segi apa sebenarnya apa tu cadangan yang dicadangkan oleh MSCC sendiri untuk saya. Latifa said that this conversation was wrong since Zulkifli was leaking information to Najib, who was a possible suspect at that material time. She then added that this could have been in violation of the Official Secrets Act. Latifa declined to say whether revealing the recordings would affect Najib's ongoing trials or whether it was considered subjudice. And the conversation revolves around an investigation paper. As you can hear, uh, uh, the, there is an obvious uh, leaking of information from the AG's chambers to the person who is, uh, we believe is a subject of investigation. Now, when we asked the former Prime Minister about his comments on the clips, this was his response. The former PM was asked about his response on nine audio clips released by the MACC, purportedly of him speaking to various individuals in connection to investigations on the 1MDB affair in 2016. When met at the Kuala Lumpur court complex today, he said he needed time to study the contents of the audio recordings. Najib also suggested that the timing of the release was linked to the Kimanis by-election campaign. Uh, saya terkejut dengan revelation ini dan uh, saya sedang mengkaji konten tu uh, dan uh, saya dah refer perkara ini kepada peguam saya uh, ini tak pernah dilakukan dalam sejarah negara kita dan timing ini pun dekat dalam masa Kimanis by election Najib's wife Rosma Mansour was also asked on her comments on the audio clips in one of the audio clips, an irate Rosma could be heard chiding her husband for appearing like a villain. She also told him to take charge and described his advisors as goons. Rosma said that her lawyers would look into it. <laughs> Najib and his lawyer Shafi Abdullah had a press conference outside of the Kuala Lumpur court complex after their case today and this is what Shafi had to say about the said audio clips. Clearly SRC is involved, uh, one MDB is involved. One other matter is the Rizas uh, matter. Rizas matter as you know is also in court. Um, releasing the tapes now and discussing in public in a, in a, in a, med in a media release uh, is in fact subjudice. It is in fact a contempt. We are seriously contemplating a contempt action against MACC, in particular Latif Apoya. Because I think as a lawyer, although she refused to admit that she was also speaking as a lawyer in qualification, as a, as a lawyer she should know that this was not just merely bordering contempt, it is contemptuous. Yeah? Now, was MACC trying to influence 
and subjudice the ongoing trials. PKR President Anwar Ibrahim has called for Malaysians to defuse tensions when dealing with issues of race and religion. The PKR President said that people must help to defuse tensions in dealing with such issues. His remarks followed recent claims that the school SMK Pusat Bandar Puchong 1 had contravened the federal constitution by decorating the school for the upcoming Chinese New Year. Secara umumnya kita harus bantu menyederhanakan sedikit. Saya tidak setuju macam dan saya lakukan keluarkan statement juga kadang-kadang katalah macam tulisan Jawi reaksi yang melampau pun tidak boleh juga. And now we move on to international news. Iran launched missiles at US-led forces in Iraq early on Wednesday, retaliating for the US drone strike on an Iranian commander whose killing last week stoked fears of a new Middle Eastern war. Iran launched a missile attack on US-led forces in Iraq in the early hours of Wednesday in retaliation for the US drone strike on an Iranian commander whose killing has raised fears of a wider war in the Middle East. The U.S. military said that more than a dozen ballistic missiles were fired from Iranian territory against at least two Iraqi facilities, hosting U.S.-led coalition personnel at around 1.30 a.m. local time. According to a statement on their state TV, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps confirmed that they fired the missiles in retaliation for last week's killing of Qasem Soleimani. The statement advised the United States to withdraw its troops from the region to prevent more deaths and warned U.S. allies, including Israel, not to allow attacks from their territories. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif said that Iran took, quote, proportionate measures in self-defense under Article 51 of the United Nations Charter, targeting the bases where the attack its citizens and senior officials were launched. Prompted by strong public backlash over Soleimani's killing on Iraqi soil, lawmakers in Iraq voted Sunday to demand a removal of all foreign forces from the country. More than 5,000 U.S. troops remain in Iraq. Hyundai has unveiled a concept of their flying car at the Consumer Electronics Show or CES in Las Vegas. Hyundai has teamed up with Uber to develop electric car taxis, joining the global race to make small, self-flying vehicles to ease urban congestion. U.S. ride-hailing company Uber Technologies Incorporated and South Korean automaker Hyundai Motor have teamed up to develop electric air taxis, joining the global race to make small self-flying cars to ease urban congestion. Hyundai is the first car maker to join Uber's air taxi project, which also counts Boeing subsidiary Aurora Flight Sciences among its partner firms. Hyundai will produce and deploy their vehicles while Uber will provide aerial ride-share services. We will be able to fly on demand, just imagine that, rather than fitting our lives around an airline's schedule. I would like to call this new era an era of liberation from gridlock and the democratization of flight. Hyundai unveiled a concept of the electric vehicle at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas on Monday. The SA-1, as it is known, is expected to fly trips with distances of up to 60 miles at speeds of up to 180 miles per hour and is designed to carry up to four passengers and a pilot. Last year, Hyundai pledged to invest 1.2 billion pounds in what it called, quote, urban air mobility by 2025. Uber says that they aim to launch Uber Air and offer flying taxis by 2023. Before we wrap up, here are some of the news highlights from today. And that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. Don't forget that you can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Daily Motion for the latest news updates. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching.